Jimmy Butler's incredible story is straight out of a movie. The day was July 6, 2019. Jimmy Butler signed with the Miami Heat via a sign and trade deal with the 76ers in a four-team trade. He then led the team to the 2020 NBA Finals against the eventual champions, the Los Angeles Lakers. Jimmy was ferocious, clutch, and unreal, putting up monstrous numbers and a heroic performance during the bubble to lead his team against the top NBA teams. He was the engine that made the Miami Heat go. Even though his decision to sign with the Heat was met with doubts, the Heat was successful in acquiring a superstar to serve as the new face of their organization. Jimmy Butler was constantly written off and questioned not only during his NBA career, but throughout his entire life, but it simply fueled him to greater and greater success. Although it may appear that Butler has accomplished significant milestones over the course of his 11-year career, one might be surprised to learn that the odds were stacked against him when he was a child. Butler was left alone when he was a kid, but he turned his love of basketball into a career and eventually established himself as an NBA player. Let's play full court, baby. Your go-to channel for the most interesting basketball topics. This is the incredible story of Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, who was born on the outskirts of Houston, was inspired to become an NBA All-Star by the love and support of his family, but not by his biological parents. Butler never knew his father growing up and his mom kicked him out of his home at the age of 13, leaving him alone in the streets and left him to roam the world on his own. His mother was not the most caring person, even though he was only 13 years old. His mother had the following words for him to hear before she put an end to their relationship. I don't like the look of you. You gotta go. Just try to picture your mom saying those things to you. Jimmy was well aware that this was the harsh reality that he would have to embrace and learn to accept in his life. Despite this, Butler has been cautious to bring up the negative aspects of the story. And for the first several years, he was successful in keeping them out of the media's spotlight. At the end of the day, he didn't want anyone feeling sorry for him because of his upbringing or lack thereof. Jimmy said there was nothing to feel sorry about. He loved what happened to him. It made him who he is and he's grateful for the challenges he faced. He reiterates that no one should feel sorry for him. Butler, as a lone teenager, was forced to stay with his friends and move from one couch to another every few weeks just to get by. This went on for almost four years. He spent every waking moment in school pursuing his love of basketball. And by the time he was in high school, he had developed into an impressive athlete. He was a competent player and averaged 10 points per game during his junior year at Houston's Tomball High School but his NBA hopes were a far-fetched fantasy. His love for basketball grew significantly while he was in high school, and it served as a haven for him at a time when he otherwise had very little security. He stayed with his friends for short periods until his senior year of high school when a friend's family took him in. Jordan Leslie, a fellow athlete at Tomball High School, who was in his freshman year, had been keeping an eye on Butler's performance on the court for quite some time and approached him over the summer before Butler's senior year. Butler and Leslie met when Leslie challenged him to a game of three-point shooting, and the two quickly became good friends. They played video games and spent the night in Leslie's house where they spent time together. Butler spent a few nights, which subsequently became weeks, crashing at Leslie's place. Michelle Lambert, Leslie's mother, was hesitant to accept Butler into their family at first because she was already a mother to four children from her late husband, and her new husband also had three children of his own. In addition, the family was already struggling to make ends meet, and the addition of a new child would not have been ideal for their situation. The seven youngsters had grown close to Butler and were keen on keeping him around, and so, after a few months of begging, the Lamberts brought him home. I told Jimmy my kids looked up to him. He had to stay out of trouble, work hard in school, he had to set an example. And you know what? Jimmy did it. Anything I asked him to do, he did it without question, said Michelle. Jimmy Butler found a home, but most importantly, he felt loved, cared, and accepted. All of it wasn't just because of basketball. The main reason was Michelle, a tender-hearted and caring mother. She did all of this for Jimmy Butler, an affection he once missed and now found in the home where he least expects it to feel. After finally finding a home with a real family, Butler blossomed in the game of basketball for the Tomball High School Cougars. 
He was so good that he was named team captain during his senior year. Unfortunately, Butler was not scouted or offered scholarships from any of the schools he was interested in attending once he graduated from high school. Due to his lack of options, he enrolled in Tyler Junior College. He quickly rose to the position of leading scorer in his freshman year, drawing interest from other top schools. In 2008, the universities of Marquette, Kentucky, Clemson, Mississippi State, and Iowa State all extended scholarship offers to Butler by that year. Thanks to Michelle's advice, Butler decided to enroll at Marquette. Michelle was impressed with Marquette's academic curriculum. She told Jimmy that he should go and play ball with Marquette and that basketball may not work out in the long term. He needed an academic background, good education, and a degree to fall back on. Butler played under coach Buzz Williams at Marquette, and he recognized the player's determination and pushed him hard, motivating him to see his own potential. He has never been harder on a player than he has been on Jimmy. Coach Buzz was ruthless with Jimmy. He didn't know how good he could be. Jimmy had been told his whole life he wasn't good enough. What his coach was seeing was a guy who could impact their team in so many ways. Jimmy did not have an opportunity to play for the first time until he was a junior at Marquette University, where he spent his sophomore year warming the bench. He was homesick at that time and often wanted to return home. But things turned around in the end. And by the time Jimmy was a senior, he had developed into a versatile player who was able to pull down rebounds, handle the ball, and defend several positions. He didn't just play as a scorer. He realized that to be successful, he needed to be more than a scorer. Rather, he needed to become a leader. As the team's glue guy, Jimmy Butler is always there to help out. He is always willing to step up and take on whatever role is required of him make baskets if his team needs him to. In addition, he will die for loose balls and harass the top scorer on the opposing team with his defense. He wants to be the person on his team that everyone can count on. The guy who once cared about points became the ultimate utility player. Jimmy played hard on every possession, took charge and defended well. Jimmy credited his toughness to his coach. He knew what buttons to press that could get him going. His versatility captured the attention of NBA scouts, who secretly watched his games throughout the year without him knowing it. After Butler's senior year of college basketball came to a close when he averaged 16 points per game, the Chicago Bulls used their 30th overall pick to choose him in the 2011 NBA Draft. Butler was finally an NBA player, but nothing came easy for him as a pro. Unlike the top picks who started every game and played significant minutes right away, he had to fight his way back up from the bottom. The Bulls' biggest struggle had been convincing Butler that he is more than just a utility player. Enter Rip Hamilton, a former shooting guard who played with Butler during his first two seasons in Chicago and proved to be an important mentor. Rip helped Jimmy Butler gain his confidence, encouraging him to be the best two-way player for the team. Rip also told Jimmy to play like he's playing when it's one-on-one. -on -one. Jimmy needs also to contribute if he's making shots and guarding his matchup player. Butler averaged just eight minutes per game in his first season. After joining a playoff team that had Derrick Rose, Luel Dang, Joakim Noah, and Rip Hamilton, he made some substantial strides in the second year. But the third year was when everything finally began to fall into place for him. As a result of Rose and Dang being limited to just 10 and 23 games respectively, Butler was able to grasp the opportunity and demonstrate that he is a great scorer and dynamic defender at the next level. By the end of the fourth season, he had been named to the All-Star squad and was averaging 20 points per game to lead the team in scoring. He had also solidified his position as Tom Thibodeau's top choice even as Derrick Rose worked to recover from his injuries and regain his footing. Back in 2018, when stories emerged about Jimmy Butler's disdain for Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins in Minnesota, due to his belief that they didn't work hard enough and weren't making the most of their talent, and leading a team of third-string players to a dramatic win against the starters during an infamous and expletive-filled practice session, Butler's legend reached a new level. Despite this, the narrative contributed to the widespread perception that Butler was a difficult person who was also a bad teammate. In the years that followed, he moved between Minnesota, Philadelphia, and Miami, even after joining the Heat, a team that appeared to offer him a spot that was tailor-made for him. 
Butler was subjected to persistent and severe criticism. Some people doubted him just like these guys, Stephen A. Smith and Lisa Leslie. They said Jimmy Butler would never be loved in Miami like D. Wade, while Lisa went on to national television and described Butler's decision to join the Heat as a loser move. This would appear to imply that his top interests were making money and enjoying the South Beach lifestyle. I don't know, man. What's with these people? The more time passes, the more ridiculous Leslie's scathing remarks appear. Butler, instead of sitting on the beach and counting his money, had led Miami to the NBA Finals, an achievement few saw coming. Not many people now believe he could win it all, but nobody ever imagined he'd play at a Division I school never alone make it to the NBA or become an all-star. Butler had long been in the business of proving his doubters wrong. He has always exploited other people's bad energy as fuel. He had no choice since he was a child. Anyone who doubts Jimmy Butler at this time should be aware that they are playing directly into his hands. Jimmy has stated on the record that he does not hold grudges against his biological parents for abandoning him and leaving him behind when he was a child. Jimmy has indicated in the past that he maintains contact with both his mother and father, although he prefers not to talk about his background because he does not want that to define him. On the other hand, Jimmy owes a tremendous amount of gratitude to the Lamberts, who served as a surrogate family and brought him up. Jimmy and the Lamberts share an exceptionally strong bond. Jimmy comes to the realization that he, like everyone else, is capable of committing errors. Because of the life lessons he gained through playing basketball, he had developed into a much more mature person. It instilled in him the values of not taking anything for granted, respecting others, and ensuring that everybody knows they are wanted. That is more assistance than Tomball City could do for him. He went back and shared a meal with the woman who sent him away when he was 13. From, I don't like the look of you, you gotta go. Her last words to him now, I'm proud of you. Just try to picture your mom saying those things now to you. Man, I would have cried a river if that was me. From being homeless, alone, and carrying the burden of his childhood, Jimmy has come a long way. He was fortunate to have the right tools as well as the right people surrounding him to place him in a good position. Life becomes easier when you have these kind of people in your corner who are always rooting for you to succeed. And for some, they can relate to Jimmy in many aspects of life. The events of Jimmy Butler's upbringing have played a role in shaping who he is today. Because of how hard he works and the people he surrounds himself with, he is an outstanding basketball player. Jimmy realizes that if he continues to live in the past, he won't be able to improve his situation. He had no desire to change anything that he had gone through in his life. Because of the difficulties he faced as a child, he has grown up to become the man he is now. He is light years ahead of that at this point. Jimmy Butler's unbelievable basketball journey from an underrated high school player, a two-star guard ranked 73rd in the state of Texas, to a college player starting in Juco, to an NBA draft pick, end of the first round, to the NBA most improved player, and an all-star competing in shootouts with Michael Jordan. So don't feel bad for Butler. This is not something I am saying because he is suddenly renowned and wealthy. Rather, I'm saying it because he has never wanted anyone to feel sorry for him. And this goes back to the time before he was even drafted. We would like to know your thoughts, so why not interact with us? Subscribe to our channel. Full Court. And hit the notification button to be notified when we upload more content. Don't forget to leave a like and comment below. Also, feel free to suggest any type of videos you would like to see on this channel.